scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Mm. The presence of God is mighty. Oh, yeah. 
offering to you. For this is the way you follow me. Lord, I love the way you follow me. You are the reason, the reason I live. You are the song, the song that I sing. You're my song in the night. You're my melody in the day. It's a piece of my worship. My secret place. My secret place. My secret place. There's an overflow of my secret place. Your majesty. I will go on and on. I will go on and on. Bringing you the worship you deserve. And I will go on and on. Yes, on and on. You deserve my worship. And I will go on and on. And on and on. Brothers and sisters, I'm teaching you how to dig into ancient fountains of power. This is how to dig into the wells of grace. This is how to dig into the wells of freshness in the spirit. His majesty. <laughs> hey, His majesty. Don't think I'm wasting your time. Your majesty. This is how the songs come in the spirit. Melodies that were not composed. Falling like the dew of heaven. May he put a song in your mouth. He says, You put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise. Many will see and hear and put their trust in him. I tell you, I can go on and on. If this is all I do tonight, it's worth it for my king. Because as I sing, then he steps into my life. Then he steps into my situation. Then he steps into my finances. I authorize him through my worship. I attract him as I invoke his presence in worship. I lift him above my challenges. When I worship him, I magnify him.
see let me tell you something what i'm teaching you tonight what you are doing is an ancient mystery is how mighty men tap into deep fountains of power you may not some of you may think we're just wasting time i'm sharing with you a piece of my secret place ancient fountains i tell you if, if you keep going like this you stretch it one hour two hours you will touch a fountain in the spirit that everyone will know you touch something the problem is we don't stay long enough every time his presence starts coming flesh starts telling us time is going when you bring time into the equation you ruin his presence because his eternity invading time he does not come into your your presence on your terms he comes in on his terms that's where we miss it we don't stay long enough until the glory rubs up on us when the glory comes flesh starts distracting us and we think we are wasting time because we do not know what happens when we worship he fights your battles your worship is a language it lifts up your pain before god it lifts up your challenges before god your worship is a language it lifts up your request before god you don't need to mention it don't let the devil say you must mention it no it's an ancient mystery it's the mystery of prayer and supplication you sing out your pain you sing out your tears you sing out your mountains and as you sing them those mountains collide with his majesty they collide with power your majesty it's your majesty learn it learn it it's your majesty when god releases his glory upon the people don't be too quick to allow the glory lift it's your majesty it's your majesty yeah. we declare your majesty sing Kindness are key. It's your majesty. A pretekete baba bakata. Shekete koto bakata. E protos ke pekete leketa. Shekete kete kete kete. Leke protos sekete. E prata koto porekete. Shekete kete 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 le bokosu. Brata kata ba koko sumplekete, haka brata na ba tekete, shekete tekete prekete bena na ba koso to prekete leka. Brata kata na ba kate, lekete te ba koso to lekete na ba 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 ba. Kete na 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 ba. It's your ma, it's your majesty, majesty. Lord, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your manifested presence. Please sit down if you can the seat is not comfortable just take whatever position god is already doing a lot of things let me tell you there is a heavy spirit of prophecy in this place heavy spirit of prophecy that's why i kept singing because i began to sense i began to sense the spirit of prophecy and and we must sing it to come oh let it come let it come oh god let it come 
is the mystery with which we will know what predates our age we will not stop it let it come we need to be made mighty men and women let it come let it come let the spirit of prophecy let it fall upon us inside and outside everywhere let the spirit of prophecy fall open our eyes oh god talk oh eyes oh god open our ears to hear the shofar of the spirit it's your majesty listen see let me teach you something listen the presence of God is is always around but there are certain times your worship touches a dimension of him you must be help them please you must be sensitive enough to know when he comes in we are not a religious people if this is all we do tonight because there are men who came here hungry there are times God just brings in a level of grace. Both of you lift your hands. Lift your hands, both of you. Take it now in the name of Jesus Christ. Shake Alaba. Your majesty. Wait, your majesty. Your majesty. It's your majesty. please lift up your hands whether you are sitting or standing just lift your hands lift your hands lord i pray that dimension your people have longed for right now i prophesy in the name of jesus take men into realms in the spirit i command it in the name of jesus i declare it in the name of jesus let the hunger of men be met right now let there be a rain blow oh thou wind of the spirit blow and separate men amen Oh, Jesus, I open you up to angelic encounters, encounters of angels, encounters of power, ancient dimensions of the ancient dimensions of prophecy. I unlock fountains. Let the east gate be open in the name of Jesus. Let the east gate be open and let the wind blow new levels of grace new levels of power let the call of fire rest upon your tongue let the call of fire rest upon your let the call of fire rest upon your tongue this is how you become mighty you must learn to be sensitive don't get too organized that you do not know when God steps in don't get too mechanical he knows you need to be healed he knows you need Rema but let me tell you when he comes he upgrades you he upgrades you in the spirit what is happening to us is a promotion in the spirit is how god increases the ranking of men in the spirit go ahead and pray in tongues let's just pray in tongues for a while come on men of prayer 
where you are just begin to pray so that that which you have received will sink into your mind activate that which you have received Increase the dimensions of grace. Increase the dimensions of grace. Increase the dimensions of grace. Increase the weight of your presence. Increase the weight of your glory upon our lives. We want to be envoys of your power. Envoys of your grace. Listen, this is koinonia. This is koinonia. It's not the name of a meeting. It's an experience. It's not a Sunday worship service. This is koinonia. All the men you see and admire, both around and in this ministry, this is how they were trained. This is how they were built. It's a spiritual drilling that will make you mighty. It's a spiritual drilling that will open you up to fountains of grace. This is how your prayer for power will be answered. This is prayer for spiritual influence will be answered. Just worship some more. Don't be tired. Your majesty. Your majesty. Your majesty. It's your majesty. Your majesty. It's your majesty. It's your majesty. Your majesty. It's your majesty. Obadiah Obadiah chapter 1 You are catching fire tonight. Obadiah 1 verse 21. And saviors shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the mount of Esau and as a result of their ministry the kingdom shall be the Lord it says saviors shall come out saviors this strange species of men and women this strange dimension of beings ordinary men doing the words of God men who are not limited by anything they have sustained a strategy in the spirit that keeps them victorious in the earth realm. He said, but time will not fail me to talk about Gideon and Jephthah and Barak. Men who through faith subdued kingdoms, shut the mouth of lions. He said, women who received their dead back to life. You are writing your own history. 
your sacrifice is giving you access to touch what the ancient touched hallelujah hallelujah listen you see koinonia is is a collection of all kinds of people and god does not want to live anyone's life to chance some of you watching me you will be the ones doing what i'm doing one day you see that so god is preparing you if, except you don't want the anointing except you want to join the bands of liars and noisemakers but if it is true grace you want there is no shortcut to it I'm telling you this is how it happens this is how it happens hallelujah please be seated if you can be seated if you can don't worry just leave all those you can not sit just find somewhere sit on the floor just do whatever you want to do let me just establish a few things and then we will close I come against everything I come against every force and every foul spirit I know what I'm seeing in the spirit I come against every spirit I come against every spirit. I come against every spirit. I change every prophecy that lingers upon the head of anyone that is not of God. I come with the rod of a higher priesthood in the name that is above all names. I declare that the enchantment of men the wickedness of men, the scourging tongues, men who have sworn by the sky, sworn by the stars and the constellations to manipulate the destinies of men, I bring into alignment in the name of Jesus. I speak by an apostolic voice tonight. I challenge the constellations and I command them to release the destinies of men. The binary of the order of the heavens I command in the name of Jesus that every arrangement that has been sworn and has been as a result of that bringing men into failure, poverty, spiritual backwardness. I challenge those powers from the second heavens. I challenge you by the blood of the eternal covenant. I open those gates. I open those doors. I open those dimensions. In the name of Jesus, things that have been manipulated, visions that have been corrupted, experiences that have been aberrated, I plead for purity to your dreams, to your visions, to your spiritual experiences. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. be seated oh see just be sensitive to what God is doing it will be for a few minutes and we'll round up there may not be room to do any serious teaching because I began to sense this right from home I began to sense that it was tonight was a time of activations just activations and let me tell you it is very important for a ministry that as we begin to teach have miracle services there are services that are special impartation services this is one of such just impartations raw impartations of the spirit it is part of the ministry of the word look you need grace i'm telling you you need it you need the anointing I said it last week the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference the anointing is the difference between failure and success the anointing is the difference between your current CGPA 
and where you need to get to the anointing is it you will struggle for nothing but the anointing so don't you think what is happening is just power to heal the sick the anointing is the difference between you and that joblessness the anointing when the principles have been taught and you understand the principles when your obedience has been perfected you need an agency that forces compliance in the spirit the name of that agency is the anointing we live in a wicked world where there are all kinds of assaults of darkness it is through the greatness of thy power that your enemies will submit themselves recurrent sicknesses it comes and goes comes and goes brother you need the anointing i tell you all kinds of manipulation of darkness in the dream eating all kinds of nonsense hearing all kinds of sounds the anointing does not make the difference it is please learn this it is the difference it is the difference you can do ministry listen to men of god and get their tapes and copy what they are saying you will never see the result until you pass through this process it is the anointing that gives life to your words it's not about speaking it's not just about rema you can hear what somebody said you can get a koinonia message preach word for word it will not produce the effect because the anointing how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power and he went about his academics he went about the business he went about the ministry the anointing is what will separate you marriage will not just come because you are beautiful no 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 the anointing it says because of the ointment do the virgins love thee because of the ointment not because of your looks sons of solomon he said because of the ointment there is an aura esther began to anoint herself with a kind of oil for one year and ahasuerus picked her as queen it is the anointing that is the difference they can call anybody for a job it is the anointing that separates you please respect the operation of the anointing don't let men just tell you that you will keep doing everything you are doing and it will never work until there is the anointing. Koinonia is nothing without the anointing. You can print all the posters you can. Print all the banners you can. But the anointing. Your life is grossly deficient. And you see, Jesus was giving the anointing without measure. And we are all attaining there. But it doesn't mean you have the anointing without measure. It's not true. I've had preachers preach that you have the anointing without. It's not true, brothers and sisters. For there is a progression in the spirit. And he measured a thousand cubits. And it was to my feet. And he watched my response to that dimension of operation. After a while, he increased it again. Boundaries can be enlarged in the spirit. All of us are not functioning at the same realm. That's why you can do what everybody is doing. But your results are different. It is the anointing the anointing you can collect the mic with a beautiful voice and sing but it is the anointing he said they were caught to the heart as Peter began to speak have you read the message in Acts chapter 3 it's not the kind of message you preach in a crusade but the anointing made the difference I treasure the anointing and I treasure the custodian of that anointing that's why we honor the ministry of the spirit let me tell you when you are anointed you are anointed the worst that can happen is you can be criticized but no man can doubt the finger of god he said if it is bad no kingdom divided against itself will stand right he said if i by the finger of god do this the anointing please pray in one minute where you are and say lord let it come like the dew of heaven upon my life the anointing i don't know how else to teach you this you must desire the anointing
the anointing will bring favor to your life i'm telling you in one day it will open doors of prosperity you never imagine you don't need to know nobody i'm telling you the anointing can bring peace to that family it can bring peace the anointing can bring peace hallelujah listen there are many of us we have been able to take steps from the teachings that have been coming here but for many of us the missing ingredient is that anointing samson with the anointing did mighty things when when what's the name of that lady when delilah came delilah was attacking the all she was concerned about was the anointing are you getting my point delilah had no business whether samson was strong no 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 she said what is the source of your strength tell me that's all i want to know not when are you going to marry me not when will you take me to chicken republic i want to know how come you are a man who is so slim yet you remove gates yet you use jaw bones to do mighty things what is the secret and samson kept it the anointing was hidden in his hair right according to the prophecy that was given there was a spiritual code that governed the operation of the anointing and he was told to protect it as a nazarene he would not cut his hair the spirit of the antichrist walked in delilah to keep luring him and samson said do this and that and she cried and said samson all she was after was the anointing that's why the devil is called antichrist the one who fights the anointing He fights the anointing he uses all kinds of things to fight the anointing blackmails to fight the anointing your past failures all he's attacking is the anointing because when you lose the anointing you've lost it all. and she shaved the head of samson samson the philistines are after you he got up they didn't tear any part of his body but the anointing left and he was as weak as any ordinary man and then they removed his eyes immediately and samson began to be a slave the only thing that came back to samson's life was the anointing when they went and samson stood and began to ask god for mercy they kept samson the anointing was being mocked by a dragon a god and they said you who has troubled the philistines but samson said oh lord and while in minutes the hair began to grow they didn't know they didn't notice it they were dancing and when the hair came suddenly the anointing came brothers and sisters when the anointing is on your life the result is instant 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 the day you start preaching with the anointing everybody will know you don't need to tell everybody call me pastor they will call you ministers of our god when they see the anointing you don't need to tell anybody i'm a, i'm a great businessman let the anointing come the anointing please pray in one minute just do what i'm telling you to do say lord i need the anointing in my life i need the anointing in my life for those of us who have seen a measure or so of the anointing say lord increase my boundaries in the spirit <laughs> stretch the boundaries so god in the spirit activate new possibilities in my life by the agency of the anointing let me lead by the anointing let me write that jam by the anointing let me write that wayek by the anointing let me write the exam by the anointing. Let me do my office activities by the anointing. Let me preach. Let me run this ministry by the anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please sit down. We have just about an hour or so, and then we're done. Let me see how we can just 
touch whatever we can touch. We're supposed to start a new series tonight. And um, there is a special teaching on the anointing. I already sense that there are fountains that in the days to come we're going to touch in the spirit. Hallelujah. So all of the teachings have been preparations towards it. And um, I hope we will be able to touch it. We'll just do a two-part series, I think. We'll just reduce it to a two-part series and touch whatever we we'll touch. Then eventually we'll continue. Maybe by next month. Hallelujah. Oh, I love the Lord. We are taking a series called The Imagines. The Imagines. It's a series that seeks to reveal to us God's prophetic operation in the nations and in the continent of Africa right now. In this series, we are going to be exploring what God is currently doing now. We will unveil the plot of darkness that looms upon the nation. There are all kinds of terrorist groups arising. Right? Rebellion across the states. What, what is happening? These things are prophetic writings on the wall. And we need to understand and begin to see these things from the lens of prophecy. The emergence. So the first part of it is going to be talking about the prophecy. The prophecy that is upon God's people, the prophecy that is upon our nation, the prophecy that is upon the church of the Lord Jesus Christ in this end time. And then I will also be touching on the making of reformers is the part one. That's what we'll be doing today. I will show you the spiritual system with which God makes men. How men are made in the spirit. How an ordinary man can become a man of power and stature in the spirit. Hallelujah. Then the next part of the series will be talking about the strategy. The ecclesia of God. God's strategy for this coming apostolic invasion. The Bible says nations will rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. And so we need to be prepared how to align ourselves <sighs> thank you Jesus God has always had a system. There has been a prophecy. Listen to me, please. I want you to know that we are in the middle of prophecy. We are in the middle of history. Hallelujah. The signs that the Bible begins to give that will happen are already happening. Look at what is happening in America. Look at what is happening in the Middle East down the sub-saharan africa nigeria darkness looms across the nations of the earth hallelujah the pride of kings have been humbled in these seasons economies are melting down several things are happening across the territories of the nations and god did not leave us in the dark hallelujah he said for behold darkness covers the earth and gross darkness the people that was a reality that would happen at a particular point in history and this is that time when darkness is covering the earth there are all kinds of perversions right the speakings of the beast the antichrist both as a system and as an entity i had a lot to talk about tonight but i hope that the imagines, the occultic societies, the Freemasons, the Illuminatis, these fraternities that are a symbol of rebellion, they have marked their presence across the entire strata of human activities, from the economy to the media to music. Watch this, please. But in this last day, because...
the system of the antichrist also has its mode of operation are you getting my point now the system of the antichrist is the system that will usher in the presence of that figure not just a as a system and listen to me there is a secret rebuilding of the tower of babel going on in the nations right now genesis 11 begins to tell us that a man under the influence of the spirit of the antichrist called nimrod the son of Cush, he began to mobilize men to build a city that did not honor god that city is being rebuilt again hallelujah the governmental policies that are being put the ideologies according to revelation 13 and when you read so on and so forth the speakings of the beast remember what john saw john said he saw a lamb with horns and he was about to bow to that lamb remember and about to bow when the lamb spoke he saw a lamb but he had the voice of a dragon and immediately he said this is not the lamb that was what john saw right a mixing of the truth looks like the lamb talk like the lamb or acted like the lamb but his mouth began to betray and when john listened he said uh -uh, because my sheep hear my voice and he said this is not the voice of the lamb this is the voice of a dragon so there is a secret rebuilding of the tower of babel this this antichrist system you've heard a lot about the illuminati and their agenda and we all laugh and just think it's a figment of imagination but let me tell you something it is it is the strategy of the devil masquerading itself in secrecy but in these days there is an open show of darkness it's no longer a hidden thing are you hearing what i'm saying it used to be a secret fraternity of the elite and so occasionally by divination they see through the vistas of time and they handpick potential people across music across the arts and entertainment across business and so they come to you with a proposal to manipulate things according to their will you become a benefactor when you sell your soul to the devil mystery babylon the ancient secret of initiation that brings men into fraternity with a system that is godless hallelujah and it is all the composition of the systems and so they went on with every kind of demonic manipulation let me tell you something i've said it again and again i have an apostolic call i'm not a pastor and so i'm not one of those who will sugarcoat a lot of things no no listen i tell you the truth aside from the war between israel and the world every war that is happening in this earth is a big drama theater and performing arts that's what is going on a secret manipulation of darkness please are you hearing what i'm saying i told you that the owner of i think it was mtv was asked and he said how come you have so much influence on the little children i think of ages 8 to 16 or thereabout and he laughed he said we don't influence them we own them we have developed a structure already that grows with them right and so they have invaded everything most of these organizations you celebrate are all fraternities of darkness they have signed their allegiance let me tell you satan is called the god of this world have you been told is it not in your bible the bible says he took jesus to a mountain and showed him the glories of this world and said if you bow that's the only condition bow means sell your soul bow means prove that you are not equal with god and i will give you and watch this i began to explore especially the music industry very intricately i don't know why the attention of darkness has moved very closely to music right the highest advocates of the illuminati are businessmen and musicians right please listen to me very important i'm showing you the structure we're going to talk about the emergence i hope is the I'm, I'm talking about the prophecy now darkness the word darkness there does not necessarily just mean like absence of light sunlight a system and remember the bible calls certain 
classes of spirits, rulers of darkness. That means their dominion is magnified when there is no light. They are not called rulers of light, rulers of darkness. And so they have controlled the economy of nations. They have controlled everything. Almost all the music artists that have been killed, right? All of those people you, you used to know are people who at one point or the other started violating their allegiance because they looked and they found out that this is a system of injustice, a system of darkness and any attempt to revolt will cost you your life. Please listen to me. I have seen many things. I'm not one of those who stands on stage and begins to prophesy national and all of that but let me tell you on the strength of my secret place the Lord has shown me many things and one of the things that will begin to happen upon the nations of the earth is an open show of evil it's it they, they have masqueraded it until they built sufficient structures now they are removing the mask and saying we are the ones make no confusion about it we are the ones that control your economy we are the ones that control your educational system we are the ones that control what your children watch. We can manipulate technology. I thought we would have time today. I would have shown you a few documentaries that will shock you. Maybe next week we'll do that. Right? And you will be shocked to see the extent to which this antichrist system is already building the system of Babylon. Taking anything that looks like God out. There are two things that are of concern to me. Number one is what we call the demonic doctrine of universalism. Let me explain to you what that means. Look up please. The teaching that every religion is an aspect of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That is just different sides of seeing the same thing. Have you been taught that? So there are all kinds of Christian sects especially. Occultic sects branching out pseudo christian sect and they have one mission to be able to market this doctrine of in quote love and universalism that means it doesn't matter there are different ways to get to god rather than criticizing me find my similarity with you so that we become friends are you seeing that now it is the same spirit of acts chapter 16 when a lady who was with the spirit of divination when Paul entered the city, what happened? She started looking for the areas of similarity. He is fivefold, I am fivefold. He said, These are mighty men. Why? So that if Paul preaches for three days or one week and goes out, people will say, You are the friend of Paul. So we will listen to you. A system of darkness eating people up. I've said it again and again. I, I, I pray so much, especially for our little children who are growing because. The system was well designed. This is not something that started 10 years ago, 20 years, 100 years. No. It's a strategy by the devil. Right? They worked with demons to manufacture AIDS. They worked with demons to manufacture cancer. They worked with demons to bring Ebola. They are, they are a deceitful people. They claim they love Africa. They claim they love the nations. They have sold their souls to the devil. There is no iota of love in them. They stand and tell lies because they own the televisions that give the news. They own the papers that bring the news. Are you ready for tonight's teaching? Hmm. And right now, there is no hiding again. They are already beginning to come one by one. Opening up the fact that the fraternity of darkness they are involved with is the source of their strength. They have acquired all the money. They have acquired all the fame and everything and they are now manipulating people. But the, another point, I told you that the point of concern is this music. Why, why is the attention of darkness so much on music? I will tell you why. I began to find out that it was an ancient mystery that every time it was time to bow to a king or a deity music will precede 
that home age. Please, are you hearing what I'm saying? This is a, this is, I pray that you will get what I'm saying. It was the custom of kings in ancient times. They would stand upon the pinnacle of their temples. And so they will now say, all hail the king. And there will be shofars that will be blown. Right? And at the sounding of that shofar, the entire nation will bow. If it was a graven image, they would do the same thing. Was that not what happened in the days of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? You remember? They told them that music will be played. The moment you hear that music, know that it is now time. What follows that is a bowing. And that's the same thing that is happening. So the devil is already using the weapon of music to force men to bow to this God of gold. That stature called the Antichrist. Let me tell you something. I'm already seeing the formation of the government of the Antichrist upon the earth. It's not something that will happen in one day or 10 years or 20 years, but it is a formation. There is already a formation of that godless system. And if the church of the Lord Jesus Christ does not arise to sustain the strategy from the spirit, to be able to raise a standard, then very soon we are going to be victims. So there is an emergence. Because the Bible told us the moment you see darkness covering the earth, at the same time, coincidentally, the army is rising. See that? So it's a teaching that prepares us, revealing to us that every day brings us into the reality of prophecy. Every day. Everything that happens across the nation is right now prophetic. Politicians understand right now that they are in the middle of prophecy. Individuals understand right now that they are in the middle of prophecy. Did you know that koinonia you're coming here they are all interwoven in the prophecies of this book we may never know you may not find a place in this book written joshua selman or your name but it is all part of the prophetic agenda of god whether you believe it or not jesus is coming soon let me repeat myself whether you believe it or not i'm announcing to you that jesus is coming soon Gullible preachers prefer talking about money than that. But I am telling you, Jesus is coming soon. Say amen. He's coming soon. But before he's coming, he gave us an assurance that there will be a global awakening. There will be an arising and imagine a clash of kingdoms. So there is a prophecy that is upon the world. That the knowledge of evil, the rage of evil will increase. The fierceness of wickedness will begin to multiply. Because the spirits that have been kept until this season, as they are released from the pit of darkness, they come with fierce anger. The Bible says Satan has fallen upon the earth with great fury. Because he knows his time is short. There, is, there are unleashings of arsenals of darkness. And the church and the anointing is the target. So marriages right now are under attack. Right? Marriage is under attack. All kinds of things happening. The devil is coming with all sorts of strategies and gimmicks. But there is a generation that will call him a liar. And we are that generation in the name of Jesus Christ. But at the same time, there is a prophecy upon us. Over there, 121, we read it. That saviors will arise out of Zion, the city, the place of God, the place where they have been built and trained and prepared. Saviors shall arise. And he said they will judge the Mount of Esau. That rebellious entity, that system, the Antichrist system is called many things in the Bible. Jezebel, the dragon, Babylon, Egypt. They are all an expression of one and the same government. Running from Genesis to Revelation. That city of rebellion. Hallelujah. But it's not enough for the church to know that there is a prophecy upon us. That we have a prophetic destiny. We must understand that there is a system with which God will build and make men. And around three. One great woman that uh, I've, I've read a bit of her, uh, her you know her books and her encounters with Jesus Christ 
she began to talk about the coming revival i read a lot about revivals both past and present and the revivals to come i began to read about how she said that jesus appeared unto her she had encounters with jesus for like a year true genuine encounters and in that encounter he began to reveal to her about the coming revival and she was granted access to see the dealings and the preparations of the spirit and the way the inhabitants of the earth the church the ecclesia god's system of victory will be built and equipped hallelujah so there is a prophecy upon us say there is a prophecy upon my life say one more time there is a prophecy upon my life you must believe that you are not ordinary listen you're coming to koinonia whether you are inside or outside everything that is happening is leading you towards prophecy it may not look like it you came for koinonia with pains you came to zaria maybe as a student or you came to zaria maybe to serve or you came to zaria because you got a job or marriage brought you you in the midst of all of these confusions i want you to know that there is a line of prophecy there is something happening in your life that is bringing you towards prophecy praise the lord and it's important for us to know that but then how does god make men because it's not enough to just know that there are there are reformers and revivalists the making of reformers what is the spiritual process this will explain to some of us the happenings in our lives right now and it will help and encourage us to stay true as God is working on us. Hallelujah. When the Lord began to show me this, my eyes were opened and I said, my goodness, can you imagine? First Peter chapter 4 verse 12, please. Are you there? Everyone read is projected. One to read. Beloved, think it not what? Hold on. That means don't think it is a surprise to you. Don't, don't act as though it were something strange. He said, think it not strange concerning the what? Fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. That's what the Bible is saying. I'm showing you the process the mystery of the furnace of affliction that furnace with which God makes men mighty please listen to me God is ministering to us right now there is no making of a champion without a process that will require pain discipline pruning and alignment please don't forget this there is no champion i said it i think it was last week or the week before last nobody wins the olympic by mistake no man of god just happens to be anointed by mistake there's no such thing as that no one just carries the glory of god by mistake i want you to know that there is a spiritual pathway to accessing true power to accessing relevance and strength in the spirit to be a steward of God's finances. To be a steward of God's glory. To be a steward of God's grace. Very important. And one of that mystery is the mystery of the furnace of affliction. You may not like what it, this is, but I want you to listen to me very carefully. The furnace of affliction. It was Job that began to speak to us. And he began to communicate his the tragedy that came upon his life. Hallelujah. It was Paul that began to speak to us about a thorn in his flesh. It was Moses and all of these people, Joseph, that went through certain things. Listen to me, please. Tonight, I want to change your understanding and your interpretation of affliction and trials. Now, I know that I've done a teaching on that. I think spiritual timings are there about. You can listen to it. There are certain things that happen to men that are orchestrated by darkness. I personally do not believe that God willingly takes evil or darkness or trials or this and puts upon people. However, I believe that according to the system of his wisdom and sovereignty, 
he is able to take advantage of situations in our lives and orchestrate that through them they are used as schoolmasters to prune and bring us to a point of stature and strength and relevance and usefulness in the spirit i believe that absolutely i don't know how many other people got their anointing and their grace but let me tell you there is no spiritual champion there is no principality in the kingdom that did not go through the mystery of the furnace of affliction you must understand this you don't have to pray against it there's nothing to bind there are you getting my point the only thing that happens for you or happens in your life at that point is grace the sustaining power of the spirit to go through it and finish well isaiah 43 verse 1 and 2 says fear not i have redeemed you he said i have called you by name you are mine he said when you pass through the waters i will be with you he said through the river it shall not overwhelm you but he said when you walk through the fire not run to it when you walk through the fire you shall not be burned when you walk through the fire listen to me it's very important the way they make the anointing in israel they still do that i have i have i have anointing oil straight from israel with with mar spikenard and all of these things that were used ancient ingredients the, the the spices that were originally used it smells the exact requirement the ingredients god gave i have i have a um, a bottle of, of of anointing oil like that and every time i just put a little of that on my hand i keep looking at it and the fragrance is nice the smell but then i studied a bit on how they make that olive they have what they call a crushing stone right and they take that olive and they pour it there and they put a heavy stone upon it and they start turning round and it puts pressure and it begins to crush that olive and as it crushes the olive it begins to squeeze out the oil are you hearing what i'm saying it is that way that god will make you become a man of true power afflictions are not there to kill us the furnace of affliction reveals the spiritual system that brings us to the point of obedience jesus said he learned obedience by the things he suffered he learned it it was not an impartation he learned obedience there were orchestrations in his life that compelled him to walk in obedience you will not align yourself to spiritual things just by default there is an operation of the spirit there are happenings and orchestrations around your life that are aimed at bringing you to a point where you begin to see from god's perspective and if you do not know that this is a pathway to carrying grace you will run and allow the devil mock god in your presence say after me god forbid hallelujah the first thing i want you to know about challenges that is that number one affliction and trials are not necessarily an indication of lack of faith let me deliver somebody right away there are many of us who are going through all kinds of situations right now from finance to your health to maybe marriage to whatever it is and we have been made to think that the entire reason why everything is happening to us is because of lack of faith let me tell you something I have learned by experience especially for students it's not every student who is suffering in class that is as a result of carelessness or laziness it's easy to conclude that people and look at them and say your cgp is on one point something you know it's a terrible thing you are an embarrassment to redemption however it may not be everybody but let me tell you there are a few people that they, there is a strange pathway in the spirit that they are taking that is taking them to where they themselves do not know just follow me there are many families that may not understand why in spite of their righteousness and their love for god they are tithing and giving and they are committal to spiritual things it looks like there are certain orchestrations that just seem to draw them back it's like a a cycle of woes and pain i'm telling you this that there are dimensions of the dealings of the spirit that are not demonic 
it is called the mystery of the fullness of affliction this this teaching is not for babes it's not just receive receive it, because i'm explaining to some of you the mystery behind what is happening in your life in spite of your prayer you hear god about everything but not that situation and god looks silent lord what is all this and it looks like you receive a prophetic word for others but for you you have fasted for one week at the end of the prayer all the scriptures you had were about comfort i want you to know that there is a school you are passing through and what you are receiving is a lecture pay attention hallelujah moses did not know why he ran away and for 40 years there were certain processes he was going through he did not understand until the god of israel called him and told him that he, there was a prophecy upon his life prophecies do not just manifest just because you love god there is a pathway it may not be for everybody but everyone who truly wants to be used by god goes through this pathway the fullness of affliction like a blacksmith right that melts metals to remove their impurities and now begins to carve them there are several um expressions in the bible that are used to describe this process the potter and the clay the blacksmith there are all kinds of processes the bible begins to tell us about the potter and the clay how that he picks up the clay smashes it right and now begins to mold it into fashion The fullness of affliction is a is a pathway in the spirit is the route that leads you to galatians 2 20 that realm called i have been crucified with christ nevertheless i live yet not i but christ that lives in me and this life that i live in the flesh that is the body i live by the faith of the son of god who loved me and gave himself for you come to a point where you have no life in your own. Your ego is stung until there is nothing to sting it again. There are all kinds of things that happen to you. I want you to know that there are people sitting right now, right here, that are going through that pathway in the spirit. You prayed and you said, God, use me. Anoint me and make me mighty. And God said, Amen to that prayer. You just did not know that what is happening to you is amen to your prayer. Lord, make me that multi-billionaire businessman. I will advocate for the kingdom. And God said, amen. It's just that we have not been taught how God answers our prayers. We have only been taught that result is the only proof that God has answered your prayer. But let me tell you, when you begin to mature in the things of the spirit, the fullness of affliction can be an answer to your greatest prayer. Is God speaking to us? So number one, afflictions and trials are not necessarily an indication of lack of faith. Please look at me. Many of you have been fasting and have been saying, Lord, I don't have faith. I don't have faith. We taught on faith, I think it was last week or, or week after last many of us have been taught if you pray about something and it does not happen you never had faith if you had faith it would have happened let me tell you i honor and i respect those teachings but it depends on the dimension you are standing in the spirit for you to be able to say some things are you getting what i'm saying not every affliction is as a result of lack of faith there are men who you are going through the fire right now because you have faith that's the reason why you are going through it I feel God is ministering to people. Hallelujah. You stand on that board and you see what you did not want to see. And tears rolling down your eyes, you say, Lord, you are faithful. And other people look at you and say, when will you stop your laziness? There's no need trying to explain to them. It's a pathway you don't go in group. You go alone. It's a lonely road. No matter how men love you, when you get to the end of that road, they must leave you. You can be in a relationship with your darling and sweetheart, you will part ways. Are you getting one? The fullness of affliction is customized with your name on it. Nobody can help you to take the fire out of love. You know that thing they used to say, Mbakeba Serija. 
No way. It doesn't work when you are passing through the furnace of affliction. You pass alone. Please listen to me. Hallelujah. Are you getting what I'm saying? Number two, your tears and expressions of pain do not necessarily reflect unbelief. Your tears and your expressions of pain and do not necessarily reflect unbelief. You must learn this. There are so many people who have been stopped from crying in the church. Why are you crying? Rejoice. Look, let me tell you. It's not every seed you sow crying. There is he that weepeth bearing precious seeds. It's not everything in life that happens with joy. Please, are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't let any man fool you. There are things that will happen in your life no matter how anointed you are, it will bring tears out of your eyes. Tears and expressions of pain are not a sign of unbelief. Learn this. And Jesus wept. The Bible didn't say and he wept. He mentioned the name of the person who cried. And your Jesus wept. It's alright to cry and express pain. You get to a point in your life where it overwhelms you. There are times that lack of finances will eat you up. And you stand and you are saying, I can follow one allergy somewhere and be blessed. But I love God and I stay. But the truth is, the reality at the moment is that there is no food. It's not like somebody is bringing food in the evening. There's nobody that is sending you money anywhere. The furnace of affliction. The place where mighty men are made. That's, that's where reformers emerge. For David, it was the cave of Adullam. He ran and he stayed there. On asylum, he ran away. Ran away from civilization. And he hid there. It was the place where he was made. The wilderness was one place where he was made again. You see it all through scriptures that men were separated in unpleasant places. Read your Bible and see prophets who God made to sleep on one side of the bed. Have you read that? Read of prophets that God made to mix animal dung. Read of prophets who were made to marry prostitutes. After suffering to keep themselves for decades, God said, the nature of my dealing with you will necessitate you marrying a prostitute. So long. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I know that many of you may not appreciate this teaching. But this is the kind of teaching that will make you powerful. Hallelujah. Mysteriously at a point in my life, I've shared my story. When I was diagnosed with a fungal infection. I prayed every prayer I know how to pray. Let me tell you. If you say I didn't have faith, you are joking. I had the, the whole faith in the world. They took me from hospital to hospital to hospital to hospital. Took samples of my head. I became an object of experiment. In that darkness, I began to feel the pain of what it means to have an seemingly... It was... They couldn't find out what was wrong. That's the painful part. I've shared with you the story. My mom has been here when she had to use iron sponge what you use to scrub the back of your pot huh? that's what was used on my head it's called the furnace of affliction that's why when some people come out of that furnace nothing moves them again you just shout and they are looking at you after i went see look let me a sign let me tell you a proof that you are passing through that what made you cry yesterday makes you laugh today you think about it. Somebody just says, are you going to sleep with me as before for the money and you laugh? They carry your money and go. And they say, there's no food. And you say, Lord, I give you glory. You sit down in the midst of fire and you lie down and sleep. You and the fire have become one. The Bible says you walk through it. Have you heard what I'm saying? A time comes in the furnace of affliction where all your fears happen to you. And there is nothing to fear again. The fear of lack of membership happened. The fear of lack of money happened. The fear of the carryover happened. At the end of it, when you say, God, you are faithful, there is no strings attached. 
You suspected the relationship could break. Yes, it broke. But in all, you have learned to be strong. Look, let me tell you. That, that's the secret of courage. You see some men go as if the devil, even the devil doesn't know how to disturb them again. Because he doesn't know which part of their life he will touch. Satan, Satan is not a fool. I've taught you this. He will touch your finances and see your reaction. If you do audition, he won't touch it again. Because it means it doesn't matter to you. Then he will touch your health. There is an aspect of your life you will touch. The way you will react, the devil will sing praise and worship and dance around and say, I found it. I found it. For many of us, every party touches you shout. And so God says, no, you are a babe. You may be the president of your ministry, but that furnace of affliction touches every area of your life until you become dead. A dead man doesn't have feelings again. So they just call you and say, Mr. Man, your car had a ghastly motor accident and you laugh. You say, please, can I, can we continue what we are discussing? And people say, it's like you didn't hear me. Your 2.5 million car just crashed. You say, Lord, I give you praise. Let's continue. The fullness of affliction has done something to you. You are not a pure human being again. Something spiritual has altered your humanity. It has made you strong. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Absolutely. This is the kind of fullness of affliction that can make women to carry their dead children. They say, Madam, your child just died. And they look and tears are coming out of their eyes. And they are saying, Lord, you are faithful. When is the burial date? And you are saying, what sort of insensitive person? No, 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 no. The opposite of what I'm telling you is excessive emotionalism. And that's what the, the system of darkness is doing. So people send every picture on Facebook and Twitter. You are angry. You, you snap yourself and say, I'm angry. And then five minutes later, you eat and say, now yam has come. You see, that, that bad attitude is as a result of lack of the fullness of affliction. There is a way you are built. They look at you and they say, after next week, they are coming to pack up your ministry and you laugh. Say, My God is faithful. You become unperturbed. You are not touched by anything. May God take us to that realm. If you don't get to that realm, worry alone will kill you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you do not get to that realm, I guarantee you, worry will kill you. Have you seen men who just sit down on their veranda and die? Have you seen people like that? They just sit down, bring me a stool and they sit down and die. A man will go to a mango tree and put rope by himself, right? And put the rope from under up and hang himself. Ready? Go and lift the rope and hang himself on a tree. The fullness of affliction makes you a spiritual man. Please hear me. It makes you a true spiritual man. If you have never cried, you have not gone through the furnace of affliction. I guarantee you, you have been passing through AC and the rest. The furnace of affliction will bring tears in your eyes. You will sit down one day and the whole world will change. You, you will not find value in anything. One day you will sit down and you will look at your lecturer. As he's teaching, you are thinking as if you are 70 years old. You are just thinking about life. When that happens to you, you are going to a fullness of affliction. You sit down in the office and they even call your name and you cannot answer again. Not because you are depressed, you are thinking about life. You come to a point where nothing else makes meaning to you except His Majesty. Is God speaking to us? As a man of God, you come to a point where five months, nobody, you are praying and fasting and it's during that time, no invitation no honorarium right at that time you come to your fellowship and you find three people your sister your uncle the other guy who is coming to beg you those are the three people that are around yet you are making tremendous progress in the spirit and you do not understand the fullness of affliction you stand to preach the generator spoils everything scatters your ego has been stung. On top of that, you pray for somebody who is sick and the person doesn't get healed. And they say, Pastor, I, this thing you are teaching us, we are not getting it. You come to a point where 
you just play songs you play hymns and you just sit down everything remember all those country music this world is not my home you just sit down people say why you are, i mean life doesn't make sense hear me don't just laugh it's the fullness of affliction don't think it's happening because of lack of faith if no one has taught you rejoice when you are going through those things because sooner or later is a proof that you must arrive somewhere your tears and expressions of pain do not necessarily reflect unbelief God taught me this God taught me I didn't read it in any book God himself taught me that the fullness of affliction is the school of is part of the curriculum in the school of the spirit no matter how anointed you are I give you a guarantee under the name of the Lord Jesus Christ you must pass through that school for you to be an approved man that badge you don't buy it you don't bribe your way through it the badge is a scar a scar is a sign that your wound has healed it's also a sign that there was once a wound let no man trouble me for I bear I went through it don't think I jumped the classes in the spirit. I went to it. God told you that you are going to become a financial prosperity giant. Get set for times of hunger. Let me tell you. A day will come the heavens will shut on purpose. Please hear me. If you like tight fire. Some of us that tight fire brigade fearful tight. Lord watch it all. I'm dropping this thing. If the heaven doesn't... There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. Listen, there was a time I gave everything that I had. Nothing was happening. I've just said you, I could not afford a suit. Let me tell you, and I feared God. I used to go for ministrations. I will never forget one time I went for a ministration. Rain beat me. It was time for the ministration. No car to pick me. Right? The church is, is around. It's is not too far from here. This secondary school. Somewhere there. One church that invited me. It was raining. And they were ringing my phone. They didn't. That time there was no protocol. No nothing. But I had prayed and fasted. And I got up. I said, Lord, no matter what it is everywhere was a pool of water and it was muddy i came out held my bible and i started praying in tongues let me tell you i said i'm going there i was praying i said lord i passed through it with joy a day will come people will hear me when i got there to make matters worse it was steve strings that saw me coming and he ran out with an umbrella to help me and bring me in when i got to the church they made me to stay outside so that they would arrange a seat for me to sit down there was no seat when i got there they were acting all kinds of drama and they were laughing and then after everything they whispered to me that please i have 15 minutes i should think of how to patch the time so that i can i can i can be snappy about it it's called the fullness of affliction three days fasting not not nonsense fasting six to six with proper spiritual exercises to go for it's called the fullness of affliction Many of you have grace, but nobody is honoring you. A day will come, they will honor you. Don't run too fast. If you jump classes, life will bring you back. There were times I preached, there was no... After the preaching, come Sam. They said, uh, my brother. Ah! You said you are a young man where? They used to call me Bro Josh then. Not Apostle. Apostle Fire. Bro Josh. Where? where ah, you are a young man. Uh, may God honor you. The way you are going. You will be a bright young man. May God bless you. I just stop a bike outside. Bike! And I climb happily and I go home. No honorarium, no nothing. It was the fullness of affliction. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? It was building me so that my motivation behind the pursuit of God would not be money and honorariums. I didn't have money to buy a shirt. I used to go somewhere. There was one BLW guy. He always used to dry clean his suit and keep for me. So when there's any ministration, I'll run to him and collect. And then one of my friends, I'll go and collect his shoes. That's how I would join everything. My younger sister posted one of the pictures of one of the crusades. And I looked at myself. It was as if I entered inside 
I entered inside the tavoli. I was lean to nonsense. I had fasted my life out. Lean until I became, I became like, look, don't just laugh because it's happening to you. And the devil wants to deceive you to stop the process. Pass through it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Pass through it. Let people mock you. You're a pretty lady. Nobody's even looking at you. You know that this is not the issue of demons. Demons have been dealt with. When will my change come? God says for others they can go, but you. He said, God, what did I do to you? Many of you have been asking God. God is saying, uh -uh, it's because you are different. Stay behind. The devil can tell you there is an RNG we can do for you. There's one brother that is roaming around looking for a wife. If you are interested, we can, we can come in and pretend as it is. All those, all those things. People use those strategies and they compromise. Hallelujah. They compromise. Say, I will not compromise. Say one more time, I will not compromise. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I praise him. He said, all the days of my appointed time. I remember the day I got one proper honorarium. I mean proper. You know what I mean by proper. Something sizable enough for you to smile and say, this looks like the anointing I carry. That day I went back and I was smiling and God told me to sow it. I said, come on, Lord. Abba. And I did gladly. Listen. Part of what some of you receive tonight is not an anointing to go and start a church or to prove to your fellowship that I have arrived. It's going to be a lonely road. It's already happening to some of us. Right? You graduated and you finished school and you are smiling and you drop your you know that everybody can help you but nothing has happened brothers and sisters don't let men look at you and think that it's because you are lazy and foolish there is a dealing of the spirit hallelujah come sweet come. let me tell you come, 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 come. let me tell you something about this lady this lady is a graduate of banking and finance are you seeing this She's a graduate of banking and finance and has been in a dealing with, this, with the spirit. She left Asaba and she's going to be in Zaria for the next, probably the next, maybe close to a year because there is a prophetic dealing of the spirit that is doing in her life. Are you getting me? Certified and approved by her mother. It takes crazy men to carry the anointing of the spirit against popular status quo praise the lord banking and finance with even french again yet for the excellency of that which she believes is locked up in her spirit let's, let me tell you if you want to be like everybody you will suffer like everybody if you are afraid of being different because of what you just try to be different the accusations are fierce Everybody will say, we are not doing it like this. So don't be a stupid person. Wisdom is profitable to direct. When God is telling you, go left. All prophets, like the ones in the Bible, would say, go right. It's always been right. God will say, you, go left. It's a lonely road. But it's the fullness of affliction. God is speaking to some of us here. There are some of us seated here, inside and outside. You trekked from your house or from your, whatever, your office or from school to come here. And if you don't get boss, you are trekking back. Don't complain. See it as the school. There is a lecturer talking to you in the spirit. Pay attention. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There's no money coming from anywhere. Brother, if there is no money, relax. Get a cup of water and drink and smile. And know that the world will celebrate you. There is nothing happening in my life right now that is surprising me. I'm only grateful about it. Hallelujah. Sister, when God is done with you, then you will know why he trained you. When you see the kind of man he brings and the responsibility that is waiting, you will know why your training was different. Are you getting what I'm saying? Who is God speaking to? Many of us are seated here, although we are smiling. Please play my notes. Listen. We are smiling 
but there are wounded soldiers sitting looking at me there are many of you this is how you held yourself spiritually to come here is you you pack yourself and the remaining of you and came for koinonia a lady came they brought her in from kaduna gas exploded on her gas cooking gas exploded on her burnt her face burnt her limbs and i was calling this lady and she said when can we come and see you i said this morning i thought they were joking by seven o'clock the whole family they carried themselves and they came they carried the lady when i looked at that lady and she was declaring the faithfulness of god beautiful lady turned to nonsense as a result of gas gas burnt her her feet and she loves god right many of you are touching your face nothing is happening to you <laughs> hallelujah do you know when i sat down and i prayed with this lady while i was praying with her her bond hands she held my hands and as she was crying i could see these ladies you you could sense what she was saying i'm not giving up lord you are faithful when i finished praying she said i should take her she said she wants to walk by herself and she told her mom she said she wants to show the devil she wants to put the devil to shame that's what she said and this girl got up step by step we we're going and she was walking tomorrow you will see this woman raising wheelchairs on crusade grounds when she sees people with wheelchairs the school she passed through created a memory and that memory brings the anointing that's why sometimes you see me sit down during miracle services i've gone through some pain enough in my life we say we do not have a high priest who cannot be touched when was he touched during the furnace of affliction there are many preachers who are so innocent from what is happening to members they don't know what is happening so they don't know how to preach they don't know how to love they don't know how to be there i've suffered hunger there are times that people come to meet me and say apostle as i am like this i've not eaten and i look and i say i understand no matter what it is don't give up they are trying to fight tears in their eyes i say don't give up don't be afraid i told you crying is allowed in the furnace of affliction crying is allowed cry and wipe your tears and pass through your father looks at you and says you claim there are people here among us one of us here was disowned by his parents completely there are a number of us like that on account of our faith and our, i mean disowned for real they have been on their own there are students here who are sourcing school fees by themselves every one naira comes by faith i speak a word to you don't you think god has rejected you you are passing through what will make you a principality in your time that's how great men are made. i fasted for many days with nothing to break the fast but i knew god was faithful hallelujah god. that's why today if you like bring 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 a bottle of drink that is one million and give me i'll drink it drop it and continue what i'm doing because i've passed through a furnace of affliction that gives me the appreciation to love people at every level are you hearing what i'm saying affliction it makes you to love people i went through things in my life i would never want anybody to go through it creates the true spirit of love this army are men and women that for now let me tell you all over the earth they are not manifesting yet brothers and sisters many of them are still passing through the furnace of affliction some of you it was your pain and tears that brought you to koinonia there is there is an evil in your family waiting and you are the one who is trying to emerge and you who is trying to bring your family into victory and deliverance the devil is is making them walk against you is that true some of you after this koinonia you are going back home and the spirits have gone in advance to manipulate and orchestrate trouble some of you as you are reaching home is with a slap they welcome you they say you went to the guy's house and be keep quiet it's not time to defend yourself receive the slap or realize that a principality a reformer is on his way to rise who is god speaking to a reformer is on his way to rise there are many of you people offend you and they do nasty things but god tells you get up and go and apologize to them and you say god for what i didn't god says that's not get up go and apologize to them get up and go and apologize to them 
there are times God will carry tell you to get your best gift and give your worst enemy. It's a furnace of affliction. It's a place of beauty. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You have the capacity to wax an album. You are about to wax the album and God says you are on your own. No? You are on your own with that album. He said instead carry the money and go and sow it to somebody and remain. Ha. I wish what I was saying were a lie. But it's true. You will pass through it. Some of you are going through it right now. You will pass through it. Brothers and sisters, the first crusade we went for, I think we were, I don't know if we were up to 50 or more than 50. But I preached my life out. We healed those we could heal and we gave Jesus praise. Praise the Lord. There is a prophetic word upon your life. That is why your life is the way it is going. Please listen to me. I'm speaking to you. There is a prophetic word. Some of you have written jam for years. Nothing has happened. Your colleagues have gone ahead of you and even graduated. Don't worry. There is a hand that is moving you. You may not see it. You may cry through the night. But I'm speaking to you. There is a hand that is moving you. There is an anointing you will soon encounter in the place of your pain. Where, where you sit down and there is nothing to do, all of a sudden you will find an anointing. There is a squeezing out, a pressing, like what my knee will call it, a breaking of the outer man and a release of the spirit. There is a breaking. You are, you are rising to a realm in the spirit. Sister, continue the prayers. Continue the Bible study. Don't worry. You may look like a fool. Continue. I spoke to a woman who told me that there was a time she was using groundnut oil. God is my groundnut oil. You know groundnut oil. To rub on her body. And she said, it will be great and it will be better for me one day. You want to be great? The furnace of affliction is your passport. This message may not be pleasant. It's a series we're taking. It's called the Imagines. We're looking at the making of reformers. The mystery of the furnace of affliction. Where men are made. It is the place you will cry your cry till there is no tears to cry again. It is the place you will call for help and heaven is silent. It is the place where your challenges keep multiplying before your face by the day. It comes to a point where as the mountains surround Jerusalem, that's how everything has surrounded you. Where you are praying for something to be better, another thing comes up. The Bible says they kept mounting themselves on Job. First, his animals and everything died. Lightning came and scattered his building. Then he was told that he's still one report after the other. And Job just sat on the ground. He said, naked I came. And he began to speak a lot of things. Let me tell you something. The furnace of affliction will get you to a point where you can't talk again. Your silence becomes your prayer. And God hears it. Because that is the time you will be talking the loudest. You sit down. You can't open your mouth to say God is unfaithful. But to say God is faithful becomes difficult. And it's not a sign of unbelief. Hallelujah. That's the point. Where everything in your life does not seem to work. Yet you are making spiritual progress. Yet you are growing spiritually. You are suffering from a sickness that you are healing others of. You lay hands on them and the power of God gets them free. But you have prayed and fasted for months. And this thing does not go. I bring you a matured message to the body of Christ. There is a making of reformers across the entire earth. These men, their dealings look harsh. But my brothers, let me tell you something. Do you know how the eagle trains the eaglet to, to fly? It picks it up and throws it away and just allows it. If you do, and it keeps moving around and then eventually it comes back, picks it up, takes it back and throws it away. That's why the eagle does not just fly, it soars. When other birds are moving around, the eaglet said, when I was an eaglet, I went to a lot. There are things you go through in life that kills fear. Somebody looks at you and holds a gun and says, I will kill you. All of a sudden, you remember how many, 
in my life too many things do you know why i don't fear cars jam me one huh you see all the things that have happened in my life Abba. no human being born of a woman can kill me i'm telling you this it's not pride you don't know i told you i've entered car where the armed robbers were shooting I, I, okay no they didn't shoot we we're coming from portacourt right armed robbers i was sitting on c2 luxurious bus you know c2 the one that the, the driver is down you are the one in front there are perils you go through in life that make you mature that's what releases the anointing life has squeezed you so much there's nothing to squeeze there again you are a dead man in christ you have no reputation of yourself and then when you never expect it the light will shine it will never happen when you joseph never saw in a vision that by the next day he will be the prime minister probably he now said oh lord let me be in this prison for five more years five years is enough for me not knowing that that was the last night he would have been grateful if he was told that he would stay just five more years but that night he was at the entrance of another realm leaving the furnace of affliction forever hallelujah i've shared with you how the lord instructed me to trek from that place near chicken republic till aviation i was trekking like a fool on the streets of zaria if i meet you with that madness and i say i want to marry you what will you go and tell your father he said daddy there is a, a madman there is an idiot that claim god is calling him your father has enough my daughter right shege barata kalabaya lord for you i will do it i may look like a madman but so be it look it takes unusual people the fullness of affliction makes you a human being plus something else. Right? And that's what you need. A human being plus an anointing. A human being plus a grace. We are going to pray. Hallelujah. Let me stop here because of our time. The making. The making. There is a making, brothers and sisters. There are many of us who have been bereaved. There are some of us, a lot has happened to you. There are some of us, what you are seeing in the spirit and what is happening in your life are east and west. I bring you a word. It is a furnace of affliction. If it has an entrance, it has an exit. You may walk through it so slow, but the day you will come out, you, you will be without information. You will, you will step into an anointing you will never recover from. You will step into a level of grace you will never recover from. The day Jesus appeared to me, I was not prepared for that visitor. I just loved him. I wanted him with my life. And then he appeared to me. I perceive in my spirit that there are some of us who are coming to the end of those seasons of affliction. They have lasted years. You have done, let me tell you, when that season comes to an end, you don't need connection. Everything works for you, including your enemies. It's a sign that that season has ended. And so God stamps it upon your life. Jesus died and was in the grave. All of a sudden, while they were discussing his death, Jesus the Christ, he got up, he was on his way to Emmaus, and two people were saying, have you heard? Ah, this weekend was a bad weekend for the disciples, so Jesus died, and the man said, really? He died, brothers and sisters, but he only died for three days. What you are passing through will not kill you. If he would have killed you, you would have died since. This is how you know it's a furnace of affliction. Because in it, you never die. You go through everything that can kill you. But when all the dust settles, you are still standing. This is a message for you to preach to some of our parents. They have done their best. Some of you right now, you are the ones feeding your families. Although you are students. It's you that sends money. Mommy, take 2K. And your mother is saying, Lord, when will you change our story? Tell her, Mommy there is a reform arising in this house that is the reason like the blood that was put there is a mark that is upon this family as 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 we are sitting there are mega ministries that are rising but listen it will not rise by claiming your tears is what will qualify you to climb that altar that's what will make your altar sacred that's what will make your anointing uncommon it is good to receive impartations but in the furnace of affliction, you dig your own well by yourself. You dig 
that well until you find the water. We are going to pray. There is nothing that you are passing through that is forever. I want you to know this. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When you pass through it, you will know that God is a miracle worker. When you pass through it, you will know that God is mighty. Rise up on your feet and let's pray. This is how the reformers will emerge. The first dimension of the dealings of the spirit is the mystery that is shrouded in the furnace of affliction. You will pass through pain. You will pass through rejection. You will pass through criticism. They will misunderstand you. You don't need to defend yourself. You will pass through all kinds of things. The Bible says do not count it as though it's a strange thing. When you pass through fiery trials. Lift your voice and begin to pray koinonia. Everyone pray. I draw strength. I draw strength from the journey ahead. I draw strength for the journey ahead. Pray. I draw strength in the name of the Lord Jesus. I draw strength for the days of criticisms. I draw strength for the days of weaknesses. The days when there is no result in my life. The days when there is no result in my church. The days when there is no result in my career. I draw strength to face the carryovers that I have. I draw strength to face the mockery. I draw strength to face this pain, this sickness in my body. I've been married for five years. No child. I draw strength. Go ahead and pray. He said, and Elijah went in the strength of that bread. 40 days journey. And Elijah went in the strength of that bread. Pray. 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 I draw strength for my family they may be persecuted my father has lost his job mother lost her job but I draw strength the storms do not come to kill me they come to make a reformer out of me I am part of the program of God I'm part of the program of God I may cry for now I may weep for now I may not have a helper but I lift my eyes onto the hill from whence cometh my help I may pass through the fire it will prune me it will discipline me it will teach me obedience but in the name of Jesus I will not give up Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Make a vow with destiny that I will not give up until I become a reformer. I will not give up. The sword of God is waiting for those who finish to be given. That mantle, that anointing for your ministry, for your business, pass through it. Lift your voice and pray. I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. No matter what happens, I may cry, but I will not give up. I may weep. There is an anointed man rising from this pain out of these ashes out of these ashes there is a general a custodian of the mysteries of the kingdom the reward for the pain is the anointing the reward for the pain is the anointing the reward for the pain the reward for the scar the reward for the crying is a new song he will give you a sword in the spirit you will do great business for the kingdom therefore arise Pass through it. I bring you a prophetic word. Pass through it. <laughs> 
it will not kill you the stones will rise the stones will rise you will fall and not pass to it you will cry many times pass to it you will endure you will endure hardship you will endure hunger pass to it I won't give up I refuse to give up there is a reformer there is a principality there is an anointing coming out through my pain there is an anointing Tori I'm writing history Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. The last prayer point is we are going to declare the faithfulness of God. Some of you are crying. Don't let it embarrass you. You are going to say, Lord, through the pain, I say to the heavens, you are faithful. I've been mocked, but you are faithful. I saw the carryover. But my God, you are faithful. They called me a failure. They sacked me from the job. But Lord, you are faithful. He said he will marry me. After introduction, he talked me. God, you are faithful. God, you are faithful. I lost my brother through the pain. You are faithful. I lost my father through the pain. You are faithful. I lost my pain. You are faithful. My integrity has brought me trouble. You are faithful. My integrity has brought me pain. You are faithful. You are faithful. My integrity has brought me a carryover. You are still faithful. My integrity ministry has relegated me to the background you are faithful for i will like an edifice though he slay me yet will i praise him and all the days of my time i will wait but i will wait i will be misunderstood but i will wait when all is said and done the purposes of the kingdom will be planted through me Hallelujah. We have one minute. I'd like you to pair yourselves into two and speak strength into your brother. You may be the whole you may be holding the hands of someone who came to this place ready to give up. I'd like you to speak strength and say there is a supply of the spirit. I speak to you. You saw your results yesterday. Seven carryovers. You don't know where you will start from but i speak strength from the throne they threw you away from the job and they said what you study cannot give you a living your ministry seems to have died no one is recognizing your grace but i speak strength speak strength prophesy strength don't give up I release strength upon you you can't give up at this time you have gone through too much you have gone through too much you are already getting to the end don't give up I supply spirit power I supply strength from the throne in the name of Jesus sir the Lord God of Israel Amen. is going to visit your family in the next three months Amen. you will see dramatic things Amen. there are things that I may not say in, in the open now but I see a miracle coming I see a miracle coming Amen. Um, how long have you been married sir I'm hearing a cry of a baby Amen. and it's a baby girl 
It's a baby girl. It's a baby girl. This will happen by the Spirit of God. This will happen by the grace of God. Amen. Please lay your hands on your stomach. Thank you, Jesus Christ. I curse everything that is not of God in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing you buying a new car. I'm seeing you buying a new car. God is showing me. You are buying a new car. It's a Toyota car. It's a Toyota car. You will see God do it by the hand of God. And God is also bringing you. Um, I'm seeing God bringing men to help you, even financially. Because this is one of the things that you really desire. Amen. God is bringing men to help you financially. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, let Amen. this be so. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, before I pray for the sick, did I pray for her? From Benway State. Mama, come. Do you have a daughter, ma? Yes. This is the daughter. I need to pray for you. Just leave your mother and hold my hands. We need to pray for you so that you will not have a child before marriage. Huh? We need to pray for you. There is a spirit in the family and we have to pray because even you as you are like this, it's not like you don't love God but you need to settle down. Otherwise, men, men cause a lot of problems. And it's not like you're a bad girl. It's a spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I set her free from every yoke of darkness. Let her go now. Go! Mama, may God bless you. I open a new chapter for your life. And I declare in the name of Jesus that everything that has caused you pain, my God is visiting you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. As we sing that song, there is power in the name of Jesus. All the people that came here for healing, please just come and arrange yourself. Everybody keep praying in tongues and say, Father, visit me. God is visiting people inside and outside. Please be orderly. Let's do it very fast. There's power in the name of Jesus. There is power. If you came with anybody's picture, you can also hold it. There is power. It's called a miracle service. It's not just a name, it's an experience to break every chain of darkness. No matter if there's no space, just stand as we pray for others, then they will give way. There is power in the name of There is more than enough power to address any situation. I don't care what it is and I don't care how long it has been. Hallelujah. I'm going to lay my hands upon you and pray. Listen. Some of you are coming in for sickness. But what is the, the root cause of all of this is, is that is the same root cause that is affecting finance, affecting marriage. God is not just going to heal you. Hallelujah. God is going to address the root cause. Hallelujah. So as I pray for you, I want you to march down to your seat. Whatever you could not do, make sure you begin to do it. Hallelujah. I already sense the fire of the Holy Ghost upon my hands. Very strong. And all of us who are standing, God is touching people inside and outside. Be focused. Don't be distracted. By the way, if you have not written your prayer request, 
now is the opportunity to take advantage of it hallelujah father we thank you let there be such a move of the healing power of jesus that as this ends are laid stretch forth your right hand oh god and let your people be healed in the name of jesus There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. This woman crying. Hold on. Hold on, please. Who brought this woman? I brought myself. Jesus brought me here. But the evil spirit has been attacking me. Something has been moving up my body. It's okay. Please don't cry. No. Uh, about 30 years now. Tonight is your night of liberty. I hear the chains falling. Jesus. I cause this spirit chains out. Out. I command that devil of death. I the chains. Leave this body now. By the power that is in the blood of Jesus. I hear the chains fall down. In your, there was pain in your leg, but now is there pain? It does. Do check yourself. It does. And it's like your stomach used to feel strong, and and then you feel something moving like a snake. Check it now. Check it now. Squeeze yourself. Father, Jesus, Father, thank you. There's nothing. I'm not feeling anything. Everything has gone. This was a spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are here. Come on, celebrate yeah. Jesus, people. God. Oh.
Let her go. Out. By the fire of the Holy Ghost, there's no standing for you.
I'm not afraid. Hallelujah. Listen. Hold on. It doesn't matter what the problem is. Do you understand? If I ask you, it's because God told me to ask you. Whatever it is, just believe that as I'm praying for you, it's going. Are you getting my point? So move forward. Some of you, if, if we keep asking one by one, it doesn't matter what it is. Hallelujah. Go ahead, watch it. I believe. I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord. Five years of ulcer, you'll be healed, right? And discharging. Hey, don't worry. God will set you free. That devil is a liar in the name of Jesus.
miracles everywhere and miracles everywhere miracles everywhere and right now right now and miracles everywhere I see miracles everywhere everywhere miracles everywhere Please make sure you are praying. Don't think God is just touching the people here. There is something the atmosphere is doing. Let's just finish the prayer for this.
miracle walker God is a glorious God God is a miracle walker God is a glorious God lion in the spirit this guy has a wild spirit when he's angry he can kill and it's not his fault this is this is an ancestral thing see how many people trying to hold one person this is how it will tie his destiny this is how he will get married to a very innocent lady and be manifesting things that he doesn't know i set you free right now this is a place of liberty leave him leave him he's free Oh, yeah, man. 
Setting families free right now from marital delay. Lift your hands, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. All those affected, as you count three, the fire of God will sweep across this place. There are marital destinies that have been tied down. Some of you, you are standing, but you are representing your family in the name that is above all names. Right now, anyone tied under any manifestation spirit husband spirit wife every manifestation of darkness as you shout the name jesus right now i command those doors to be open one two three free i set you free now right now right now right now be free I open up doors of marriages inside and outside. Be free. Be free. Every spell, every curse stopping your marital destiny. Hallelujah. Mommy, please can I talk to you? Your time of visitation has come because the Lord is saying he's going to wipe your tears and he's going to do this speedily. It's by the hand of the Lord. It's where is your husband, man? Do you know why I'm asking you this? Because your situation is like in a similitude of that of Sarah, but God is going to wipe your tears. Please believe me. When I pray for you, I'm praying for marital delays. And then I'm looking at you. And the Lord is saying that this woman does not even have a husband. At the point I even say, ah, what is this? Is that true? And I'm asking myself, but I'll pray for you. You, you trust God to settle down? I'll pray for you. Yes, it will happen. It will happen. Anyone here due for marriage, listen anyone here be it yourself or any member of your family that is long overdue for marriage right now i prophesy in the name that is above all names let those doors be open now may those doors be open now 
something is happening in this place may those doors be opened now may those doors be opened now madam you will stand before the people of God when your wedding card is out if there is a God in heaven I break that curse right now now and I release your marital destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's the Lord God Almighty. He's the Lord God Almighty. The earth is full of His glory. My life is full of Your glory. And the people say, Holy, Holy, Holy. And the people say, Holy, Holy. Hallelujah. All of you lift your hands. God is going to do something amazing here right now. Listen. Everyone is standing for himself now. Not for family. Please lift your hands. Listen. I'm seeing powers that have tied down the advancement of people. Listen to me. Because the Lord is ministering to me and I'm seeing someone standing with a sword and this is a sword of judgment this one is not for families again there are many of us you are walking but you are standing because nothing is moving right now in the name of Jesus many of you will literally feel the fire of God come upon you like a baptism is burning chaffs burning chains some of you, your academics are the way they are right now because of powers. Neke paratika. Come on now. Father, in the name of Jesus. Right now, chains be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Chains be broken. Baptisms are happening. Baptisms of fire. Personal deliverances of fire, fire, fire. The fire of the Holy Ghost. It's time for you to move forward. Fresh fire to move forward. Fresh fire. No stagnation. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are still going to do this again. Listen, I'm telling you, this is the root problem of many of the our predicaments. There are there are forces. Please follow me. This is the part you get to participate. Lift your hands again. Lord, what is it that has tied your people down? They have prayed for others. They have ministered to others. But right now, like a volcano, let the fire of God sweep across this place. Right now, let it burn the roots. Let it burn the roots. Set the roots on fire. Set the roots on fire. Let your people make progress. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Let's enter the realm of your academics now. There are horns. Tied people's CGPA. Tied people's minds. But he said, I have sent carpenters. Lift your hands. It's not everyone that is dull. There are people who are studying. You are doing your best right now all of those ones your hands fire is coming on your hands just your hands there will be a mighty deliverance right now one two 
Three. Fire on your hands. On your hands. Fire. Academic liberty. Fire on your hands. We break those chains. We break those chains. We break those chains. Come on, join me as you pray. Join me as you pray. Academic chains be broken. Hallelujah. There are some of us, listen, God is setting people free tonight. One cycle of tragedy. As soon as he's finishing, another one is starting. It, it never comes to a point where your family can experience peace. The Bible says, and he dug a well, and they came and closed it. He dug another one, and they closed it. And he dug the third one, and they left it, and they said, Rehoboth, the Lord has given me room. I'm praying right now. Please pay attention to what I'm doing. This is the root cause. Believe me. You will be wasting your time for nothing if you don't confront these powers you can receive temporary breakthrough but you will get back into the same situation hallelujah in fact we are going to pray just for one minute hallelujah you are going to pray i like you to pray like a priest in the next one to two minutes listen I like you to tell the Lord that whatever is the root cause you are not concerned about the fruits and the leaves it may be headache leave that one Lord what is the root cause of my stagnation what is the root cause of my family's problem in the name of Jesus let it be confronted tonight lift your voice and pray I pray Ropoko poto pata. We attack the root causes of sicknesses. The root causes. Pray. Pray for your business. Pray for your ministry. Pray for your academics. Visit me tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. The Bible says. The children shall not suffer the iniquity of their fathers. But there are many of us here. The troubles in our lives are as a result of the mistakes and the wickedness for some of us of our parents and loved ones. He said, who's seen that this man is in this situation? Is it him or his father? Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Please lift your hands. God is setting men free tonight. Anyone here going through circles of tragedy as a result of covenant and parental influence, as you shout the name Jesus after the count of three, may the fire of God separate you from the mistakes of your lineage. In the name of Jesus. One, two, three. Be separated, be separated, be separated, now, be separated, I break limitations, ancestral spirits, tribal 
spirit, territorial spirit. Right now, be free. Every name that is in any demonic cover, we set it on fire now. We set it on fire now. Jesus died to set us free. Jesus truly died to set us free. It wasn't a joke. He said, but we do not see all things under his feet. Lift your hands again. Lift your hands again. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. I am ready to make progress. I'm ready to move forward. I'm ready to break barriers. And tonight, by the blood of Jesus, I confront and challenge the root causes of my limitation. Lift your voice and begin to pray. We challenge it. We challenge powers that have limited men. There must be a release tonight. Jacob wrestled with God. Pray. 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 It's time for you to move forward. It's time for you to break limits. Break limits. I tell you, God is there are there are massive, there is an emancipation. Lift your hands again. Say after me in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus speaks for me. In the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is the price for my freedom listen keep the hands lifted just keep them lifted all instruments just stop just lift your hands and keep them lifted there is a reason why I'm saying you should keep them lifted hallelujah the spirit of God is going to walk through the crowd listen just keep them lifted something marvelous will happen right now I'm seeing water that God is pouring on people Right now, let the power of God move everywhere, inside and outside. This water that I see an angel pouring is a cleansing, is a purging of many people's foundations. Just keep your hands lifted. You may not understand what is going on, but just lift your hands. If you trust that God is in this place, let the angels move right now, row to row, line to line. Visit men, oh God. Visit men. Visit men. Catelato. Row to row. Water. There are three that bear witness in heaven. The spirit. The water. The blood. I invoke the power of these three spiritual entities. Right now. The mystery of the spirit. The water. And the blood. I tell you, see, many of you will, will walk into levels of breakthrough that will surprise you. Keep it lifted. Just keep it lifted. Keep it lifted. You don't know what is happening in the spirit. Just keep it lifted. Jesus. Shikaparia. Neketa. Manteporiata. I see covens on fire. I'm telling you, covens of darkness on fire. This is not just your family. This is your life now. 
you prayed for your family but you need to move forward otherwise men will think you are faking this thing a chain is falling from someone's head a chain is falling from someone's head a chain is falling from someone's head i see this in the spirit a chain is falling this is mental bondage a chain is falling i'm hearing sounds of chains Hallelujah. 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 Now, before we submit the prayer request, lift your hands. You are going to mention one thing, just one, that you want God to do, that everyone will know that this one, I prayed it here and God did it. Are you getting my point now? I'm just walking based on the instructions of the Spirit. He wants to give you a sign of his presence in your life i know you wrote many things brothers and sisters in the next one minute cry out one thing one just one don't be foolish pray pray i'm ministering by the influence of the spirit pray no matter how impossible it is pray So Topa, unto you that answers prayers, will all flesh come. Unto you that answers prayers. Soposa, leke sepanda, rekete kapa, mataleketa, what thing soever ye desire. When ye pray, believe that you have received it. Believe that you have received it. There is nothing out for my God. Pray it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everyone, let's pray in tongues for one minute as we collect the prayer request. Please, go ahead. God is just leading us to pray and he's doing many things in the background. Please, quickly, in one minute, let's submit the prayer request. Pass it to the last person. Pass it to the last person. Ushers, please, cooperate with us and let's hurry up. Pray! Pray. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Keep passing the request, but listen to me. I made a vow to God. I just returned from my retreat. And one of the vows that I made to God is that I don't care what people would think about me. But if I ever have the opportunity to minister to God's people, i rather have an ugly message and let people get results are you getting what i'm saying part of my my prayer and i i took out time to cry i said lord your people must see your hand he says oh lord you are my god early will i seek you my heart longs after you to see your power and your glory as i have seen in the sanctuary that means what I have seen in the sanctuary, I am also a sanctuary, reproduce the result in my life. Hallelujah. So this program is aimed at bringing everyone into a place of personal spiritual success. And let me tell you, I know that it's not a very nice message. I wish that I didn't have to pray to confront spirits and powers that stop people. I like to preach a nice message that will just tell you that don't worry. If you believe everything is, has, has gone, it has gone. 
I wish, I just wish it were like that. But brothers and sisters, I can tell you, it is not. It is not. You will believe that lie to your detriment. It is not. We live in a rude world and there are forces. Otherwise, the anointing of the Spirit is useless. What then is the purpose of the anointing? What then is the efficacy of the blood? Why then does Paul tell us to put on? Hallelujah. I want your life to experience breakthroughs. See, otherwise, we have no right to tell people we are not faking it. Are you getting my point? If there is no breakthrough in your life, then what then is the confidence of the message that people keep saying, God is, I'm one, I believe that one result can silence a lot of questions. I'm not that believer that likes just, no, there must be an evidence in your life. I don't know how many times I saw this when I kept praying the Lord kept talking to me and said the root cause deal with the root cause of people's lives root cause I'm telling you it's not just healing alone that's why you notice I pray for the sick very quickly hallelujah We are going to pray one prayer point before we have all the prayer requests here inside and outside make sure you are participating hallelujah i like you to pray and challenge every limitation whether mental whether spiritual anything that limits you is not of god lift up your voice and confront it i break limitations if there are no limitations, you will make progress. If there are no limitations, you will make progress. Please, everyone, pray. Take this seriously. Even if you are walking, be praying as you are walking. Lord, I challenge limitations. Let there be no limits in my life. Let there be no limits in my life. Let there be no boundaries. As far as your eyes can see. As far as your eyes can see. Ushers, please, let's hurry up. Ushers, please, let's hurry up. Sopotoko patadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadad
of the Syrian army. He said he was a mighty man. But tonight we are going to confront the bots in our lives. You are academically excellent, but there are limitations. I don't know if there are limitations in someone's life that you are saying, Lord, in this miracle service, this is it. Hallelujah. While I pray in the next two to three minutes, instrumentalists play, clash the cymbal, and everyone pray. Hold the hands of your neighbor. If he's joking, leave him and hold another person. confronting limitations many of you don't know what limitations are you poverty is a limitation are you getting my point spiritual bankruptcy is a limitation a prayerless life is a capital limitation a wordless life is a limitation when you are supposed to get married 
and you've not gotten married is a limitation academic backwardness see there are very few people who are here for for sicknesses and all is is limitation that's the name of what you are going through hallelujah before i prophesy we'll soon have the last session and then we're, we're done we're still going to pray don't be tired i beg you just follow through with me if you believe that i hear god and if you believe we are walking by the spirit i'd like you to pray hallelujah limitations i know a brother listen listen i know a brother that for many years this gentleman was so gifted but i'm telling you nothing was working in his life please hear me this is a true story very gifted but things were tied down hallelujah he did everything did everything that that he knew to do but when god made him know that these things are limitations he took a quality time of his life challenging it and brothers and sisters when he prevailed doors were open it was as if the blessings have left heaven but to now come to this realm and daniel remained in prayer please hear me anything that kills your prayer life has stopped you from your breakthrough it's not the issue of i'm called into the ministry of prayer or not forget that nonsense that the devil brings men ought always look 18 1 he spake this parable if you are alive you don't pray because of fear you pray because it's a spiritual transaction it makes things possible in this realm hallelujah we're going to pray one more time and you're going to say lord one more time visit this issue of limitation in my life and my family hallelujah listen listen mention the aspect where you are facing limitation don't feel embarrassed mention them and say lord let your fire come upon it lift your voice and pray koinonia pray pray your way to breakthrough sopata Teka repoto pakata sente teke pretekete superia tadaraba. We lift up an incense of prayer. 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 Change lives. Break limits. Financial limits. Support Sata Intellectual limits Marital limits Job limits We break it Support Opata We break limitations Business limitations Ministry limitations limitations of potentials hallelujah the last prayer point hallelujah the last prayer point every time limits are broken the lord will bring a man to hold your hands and create the opportunity for the next level of your life are you hearing what i'm saying Bishop Oyedeko will say there are days and there are certain days. May this night be the certain day. Listen. Your next level is in the hands of a certain man. The Bible says they wanted to kill Joseph but a certain man came and they said they wanted to buy him. If not because of that certain man they would have killed him. Are you following me now? The Bible talks about a man who was crippled he could not carry himself certain men no names they lifted him and opened the sea oh god whoever is that certain man that must appear my destiny i come i compel them to come 
Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice. Destiny help us. Financial help us. Spiritual help us. Man of influence. Man of access. Sopotoposh. Rokotoposh. Reketetete. Men that will connect us to our next level. Men that will connect us to our next dimension. Please pray. 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 Lord, we call them for. Hallelujah. When Jesus died, hear me. The prophet prophesied that his body will not see corruption but he was hanging on that cross there was no place to bury him and a certain man came called joseph of arimathea an influential man if he was poor and broke the king would not hear him the bible says a poor man's wisdom is despised you are going to pray concerning your finances does it make sense to you to pray you are going to pray and say lord whoever must appear to change my financial destiny I receive their ministry come on now pray come on now pray support the table time and chance happens to them all time and chance be it a Cyrus or a son of the kingdom We embrace their ministry. We embrace their ministry. So put up I call them forth. Come on, pray. I call them forth. Men of influence. Kings, destiny help us, spiritual help us, financial help us, academic help us, men of influence, men who can talk to kings, pray. Hallelujah. Please leave your neighbor. Joseph would have died in the prison although anointed there are many people here your anointing will remain dormant until God sends a man to see it announce it and let the world celebrate it John the Baptist announced Jesus' ministry are you hearing what I'm saying there are many of us we have great ideas great businesses but there needs to be a certain man who will let the world know that great things are happening here please hear what i'm saying there are many of you your your academic qualification is bigger than where you are you have done your best when you have done all you need to do you need another man who is not you are you hearing what i'm saying certain men certain men It was the wine presser that told the king, he said, I know my wrongs this day. There is a man, oh, there is a man. Many of us have sharpened our spiritual potentials. You have sharpened your leadership potentials. It's not pride. You know that it's time to break forth. But the distance between you and the next level is that certain man. Lift up your hands. Oh God, where is this certain man? Let him come into my life. Come on, pray one more time. takes one man to change your business one man to change your ministry one man one man
Hallelujah. Listen to me. There are many of you here with great business ideas. Hallelujah. All you need is capital. You have done everything you should do. You need somebody to believe in you enough. Hallelujah. Listen. Truly, the race is not to the swift. And the battle is not to the strong. One man can announce what God is doing in your life. And bring to your life men who have been designed to honor it. I shared that scripture. To none of the widows in Israel was the prophet sent. God sent that to the one who could see his difference and honor him. Many of you have been in a place. You have potentials for the throne. But something is tying you down. Because you are hanging around people who cannot see what God is doing in your life. Is God speaking to someone here? There are many of our parents with their qualifications. They should never have to beg. Even if, you, if the cost of living on earth is one million per day, they should not be begging. But they need one man to announce them. One man to recommend them. Please take seriously what I'm saying. Because this is somebody's prayer request. Oh Lord, if somebody can believe in my business enough to pump even if it's just 100,000 there. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are many of us in ministry here. We are great people. This ministry you see today, we enjoy recommendations. Mysterious recommendations. While I was coming, somebody was trying to call me again and again from the UK. And he was saying, man of God, don't ask me how I got to find out about you and have your number. He said, when a man is in trouble, he will look for help anyhow. Are you getting my point? While you are sitting down to sleep, somebody is waking others to talk about you. But you must activate it. It doesn't happen by magic. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are many professors and doctors being underutilized because there is a system that cannot honor what they carry. There are many of you who graduated with excellent results. You've even added masters. And the king sent for Joseph. Somebody must send for you to leave the level that you are. And I prophesy, whoever should send for you in the name that is above all names. Listen, listen. There is a man of God, a popular man of God. I will not mention names. The man had the gift of God like whatever but nothing could announce that grace are you hearing what I'm saying people needed his anointing and his gift but nobody could announce it and then something happened one day he entered a taxi true story when he entered a taxi the Holy Spirit told him sow a seed of 30,000 naira to the driver and he didn't have much and he told the driver take and he sowed that seed Ah, the driver looked at him. He said, What will I give you? He said, Nothing. He said, Sir, can I collect your number? And he collected his number. Please listen to me. This is a true story. When he collected his number, the guy dropped. He said, Tom, may God bless you. He was feeling bad. He did not know that that was his moment of victory. Listen, the very next person that will enter that car, listen, they were part of the regional organizers of Redeem, the convention in UK. Are you getting me? One of the regions. And then the man was talking and said, Kai, we are looking for a man of God to complete the ministers we are bringing. And we need men of integrity, you know. And the driver said, sir, there was a man that gave me his number. This guy is a true man of God. And that was it. I'm serious. They called him and they said, sorry, we are from this, this region of Redeem. I tell you, they brought that man after that ministration. There were so many men of God that he never would have been able to see. Are you getting my point? They all called him and said, we'd like you to come and, and minister. Mike Mudok met a young man who was very gifted. Gifted, but there was nothing working in his life. And Mike Mudok looked at him and came. And he said, God told me to bless you. He wrote 17 letters to different ministries and said, this is an anointed man. Please open doors for him. And the guy got 17 invitations. Everybody. It does not take time to change your story. 
what looks like a mountain is in the pocket of another person are you hearing what i'm saying are you tired of praying are you tired of praying because we must call them for i don't want to waste your time let me just share it i don't know if you share this testimony did you share your testimony Erima? i'm not sure he shared his testimony maybe at an appointed time but let me say a bit of it what ambassador eh? unilever this come he just came back today we met together at the airport in abuja and then we came back together by the grace of god are you getting my point and by the ministry of just one great man prof hallelujah he has been selected as the ambassador of unilever nigeria are you, listen 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 the race is not to the swift they just came back from their training in lagos and we even bombed i was waiting for my luggage and i just saw him and they had told me he called me in lagos and he said he was around we never met how god can change a man's story my father worked for more than 10 or 15 years as assistant director of engineering there was no man to lift him his genius were rising and they, they they just trampled this man and it so happened that one man who used to be his junior he when when we went for crusade in 2006 six years he was the one who interpreted for me and he was also the one who interpreted for renard bonke when he came to joss he was that man on account of the kindness he went and said one or two things about my father and when they went to my father's um cv and all of that they said where has this man been they said immediately he should leave joss and report to lagos he has been there for three years now many of us are praying lord take me to the next level i'm telling you the secret you need a man hear me there are things you cannot do for yourself you may be anointed but your grace will remain there until a man can announce you may have a great business a multi-million and billion dollar business but it takes one man to believe in you and announce you are you getting my point i know one of my friends he was my classmate very intelligent and brilliant guy this guy finished furthered his education there was nobody to speak for him and this guy kept struggling for years nobody to speak for him and one day i i prayed i said oh lord but help this guy this guy has paid the price look when i say i i think i will classify him as a genius and i'm not telling a lie but i know other people before they even finish service the road has been made plain you need someone in your life please pray and say oh god send this man that can believe in me and announce what you have invested in my life please pray send a man to change my music ministry oh god send a man send a man into my family koinonia pray we are rounding up sopotopata send a man send a man send a man send a man into my life pray for your business pray for your job one recommendation is all you need one man who can believe in you struggling continues until there is a voice that can speak for you struggling continues until there is a man that can believe in you and invest in your grace hallelujah rise up on your feet i want to prophesy into your life i truly believe that this miracle service will bring remarkable results hallelujah lift your hands please as much as possible if you can stand stand inside and outside has thou commanded thy money this system of God's kingdom does not work 
without it being activated hallelujah don't get too familiar that every miracle service we are speaking there is something that is happening hallelujah we're entering the eighth month and i want to pray for you right now father in the name of your son jesus christ the son of the living god i prophesy right now whoever needs to come into anyone's life for the next dimension of their lives to open up i call them forth right now in the name of jesus i call them forth right now in the name of jesus i call them forth right now in the name of jesus business help us ministry help us marriage help us anyone called jobless in this place in the name that is above all names we command by the power of the holy ghost let doors of job be open right now let it be open right now anyone called barry 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 in the name that is above all names we provoke fruitfulness we provoke fruitfulness hallelujah anything in your life that is dying business ministry potentials your gift your ideas your proposals your letters your visions your dreams in the name of the lord jesus christ i knock on the door of life and i command that let there be life 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 to that dry boat hallelujah everything that represents tragedy and disfavor in your life that it keeps working for others until it gets to your turn in the name that is above all names may supernatural doors of favor be open right now hallelujah i want to pray for your finance the lord is leading me to do this as many of you who believe it please can you hold a seed in your hand get a seed for some of you it may be a sacrificial seed if you don't believe it just just forget about it we don't cajole people we don't tell lies i want to speak into your finances hallelujah please lift it up is a prayer and a duty that god will come through in every area of our life well let me tell you something it will take a seed to open up the heavens just leave the hands leave the hands i want to rebuke the devourer for some of you this is for you a seed of mercy to speak over your non-tithing for some of you this is a seed of wisdom to open you up to ideas of wealth for some of you this is a seed of open heavens a seed of breakthrough just lift it up lift it up Hallelujah. the lord is showing me 11 people the fire of god is coming on your seed from your hand 11 people 11 people right now lord let your power move let them know that this is not just a conjuring of men 11 people 11 people super yatamba let that seed be salted with fire we give it a voice in the realm of the spirit please lift it up let me speak with this seed higher the power of god is moving because poverty poverty is one thing that god hates don't ever let anybody convince you that god is the author of lack and poverty your seed your seed is the key to getting out of this level trust me 
this is not a financial gimmick father right now with this seed in the mighty name of jesus every spirit of poverty goodness goodness how could we have ended this service without prophesying look at spirits i see it in the spirit there is an exit of wicked forces tying people's finances father in the name of jesus we release by the mystery of divine supply let there be abundance now let there be abundance now everything that has tied your financial life and that of your family we contend together as a family that it must be released in the name of jesus go ahead and drop the seed and pray in tongues quickly please we are rounding up please quickly ushers let's save time many of you will experience breakthroughs mighty breakthroughs lift your hands we are not done please we are out of time we have to hurry up please make sure you drop something make sure a seed leaves you hallelujah hallelujah keep the hands lifted the ushers will get to you but please there is somebody outside ah a mighty manifestation the spirit of poverty is being broken outside outside just lift your hands please i know we're out of time just give me one minute you don't need to bring the people outside just keep the, the hands lifted father whoever those people are let the fire of god locate them right now right now right now right now poverty be broken i cast that spirit i cast that spirit i cast that spirit hallelujah say the blessing of the lord is my inheritance say the blessing of the lord is my inheritance and through my giving i access that inheritance father now i'm praying for you now every limitation over anyone's life may that limitation fall now and every destiny helper that needs to come into your life to bring your life partner to bring your business partner to bring to connect you with graces in the name of jesus we release them into your life hallelujah give jesus praise Lord jesus. give jesus praise hallelujah let me make an altar call very quickly right now there are many of us here you have never given your heart to the lord please listen inside and outside we've never truly made that commitment to jesus some of us have given our hearts to the lord but we have found ourselves derailing and tonight god is calling you home wherever you are please leave your seat and come right now celebrate them they are coming celebrate them don't wait for anybody jump up on your feet and come outside wherever you are god is talking to you and saying you need to make your your ways right with jesus please come god bless you god bless you god bless you don't wait for anybody don't wait for anybody don't be ashamed i know there are a number of people outside jesus is calling you to make your ways right jesus is calling you keep coming god bless you hallelujah we're out of time keep coming pray after me say Lord Jesus I give you my heart take my everything use me for your glory today I make Jesus Lord of my life I make up my mind to walk with the Spirit of God I denounce sin I denounce Satan and I receive the grace of God to live a victorious Christian life father i pray for these ones bless them anoint them use them may their decisions last may their decisions be true 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I pray amen thank you for coming thank you for making this decision I'd like you to follow the usher follow the usher and he's going to lead you hallelujah now while I take the announcement if this is your first time of worshiping with us I'd like you to leave your seat and just run out here we want to bless and speak a word of prophecy over you God bless you we celebrate you outside no matter how far you are come come encourage them koinonia encourage them thank you ma thank you sir come on koinonia this is not the best we are grateful people in this house we are grateful people he brought them by the finger of god hallelujah keep coming god bless you keep coming god bless you thank you so much for making our time to come hallelujah we honor you we celebrate you this is koinonia a meeting put together by eternity network international this is our miracle service we're here every friday and god is building us we want to pray and prophesy into your life right now i want you to believe it because you will see the hand of god the bible says who has believed our report and to whom the hand of the lord has been stretched hallelujah praise the lord saints of god stretch your hands and let's bless them they came because they believed that god will step into their lives stretch your hands we prophesy over every aspect of your life god is coming through for you in the name of jesus christ whatever challenge you came here with we are assuring you that you will not return with it we bless you with hunger for the things of God. We bless you with the spirit of prayer. We bless you with the presence of God. We bless you with love for God. In the name of Jesus Christ. We bless you with the favor of God. You are like a well-watered garden. In the mighty name of Jesus. May you Hello beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here. Kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.